Okay. All right. We're going to, it is the time. Um, welcome everyone. This is the Committee on Administration, County of Dunn. We are meeting here today in the County Building Room 54. Uh, as soon as we get Mr. Zahns on screen, we'll know that uh, hopefully he is uh, with us. Uh, call the roll then <clears throat> would be that uh, all members are present. Um, we have uh, our county manager here with us, uh, our county IT, uh, human resources, clerk, uh cjcc treasurer uh register of deeds and human services i didn't think of the word register there i was going to say misdeed but i thought it wasn't very nice. um all right thank you all for being here uh approval of the meeting minutes our last meeting uh we had two of them actually uh between our regular meeting in, in this one. <clears throat> Our last regular meeting was uh, January 25th. And then we had a meeting, special meeting for approval of the uh, uh, contract with our powers of arrest. And that meeting was on February 14th. Uh, anyone care to make a motion to approve those minutes? I can take so both, both, both of those. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, and seconded by Mr. Bauer, approved by Mr. Lena. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, approved. Uh, public comment. Do we have any public comment uh, from anyone here? No, I have no email. All right, thank you. Um, staff reports. Again, in writing, we received reports from uh, Human Resources. Uh, Criminal Justice Collaboration Division, uh, the Treasurer, uh, IT, County Clerk, and then our Administrator, uh, Chris Corpola, uh, also uh, presents us with a monthly report. Um, any questions on the reports by any of the committee? Go ahead. I've got a question for Sarah, if I may. Uh, regarding the MAT grant, uh, basically, it's it, this is the one that they give medications to. Go ahead, I'll wait. Till you get up there. <laughs> so basically, I just had some questions when I saw that again, and I've had questions about that grant in the in the past. And basically, this is the one where we give medications to incarcerated peoples who are um, ha that have a need for them and and so my question is is who is the doctor or do we have a county doctor that administers that a psychologist uh, is this somebody within the Mayo system you know I just really don't know what that's all about Thank you for the question. All right. Um, so our jail has a, a jail medical contract. So we do have a doctor and a nurse that is uh, that operates out of the jail. So um, they're the, the jail doctor, the, the contractual jail doctor with um, advanced correctional health care. He really is the prescriber of the medication assisted treatment. Um, folks go through a screening and assessment to make sure that there's a clinical need for the medications. Um, they go through that with the substance use um, provider in the jail, but then they also have to go get a medical screening that um, that they're appropriate for the medication, that it's not going to complicate any other health issues that they might have going on. Um, and then if they continue to pass the screenings, then they would get the injection after the doctor signs off on the medical need for it. Okay. So essentially, so this is the organization that this doctor is a part of is 
the Correctional Association, you said? Yeah, the name of the company, I believe, is Advanced Correctional Healthcare, and they're okay. a contractual jail medical provider. Um, they don't charge us any additional um, funding or money to provide this service. It's just part of their standard protocol as far as the jail. The medications itself, that's what we're using the funds to purchase because they're not part of that standing contract. So that's part of the grant then is to cover the cost for those medications then? Yes. Okay. And then how often, you know, once once they say, okay, we're going to give this guy XYZ drug, okay, how often is this monitored? Um, so we only have one type of medication-assisted treatment available in jail. There's three that are um, FDA approved, but it is uh, Vivitrol. So it's an injection. So it's um, if people are um, screen appropriate and medically cleared for it um, and there's a need, uh, they would get one injection every 28 days or, or so. Uh, we look to have them at least have one injection prior to uh, release into the community um, because it gives the chance for that medication to take effect, really reduces cravings and that compulsion to maybe seek out drugs or alcohol. Um, so we, if by getting it started, there's a better chance that people will feel better by the time they're released from jail. And then the jail substance use uh, counselor sets up ongoing appointments out in the community where uh, we help them, the individual make sure that, you know, if they need badger care or, or get their insurance set up. Um, but we want them to continue these services out in the community. And those are usually paid by their, their own private insurance. Uh, we have paid for a couple of individuals out in the community to receive that shot that just insurance wasn't set up in time. So that generally would run 60, 90 days a year you know, where they would continue to receive that medication. Right, it, there's no um, specific length of time. People can be on it for a long period of time if they need. There's no contraindication that it would be negative. Um, some people find you know, they don't need it after a couple of months, they feel better. Um, but sometimes that's a sign that the medication's working. That's why they feel better and, and they're, they're kind of focused on other areas of their life. Um, but yeah, people can continue it um, out in the community as long as their doctor finds it helpful and, and not um, negative to their own health. Okay. Uh, so the, so that they are monitored on this and this is all part of the grant. And let's say that somebody's incarcerated for a year or two, this medication would be given during that entire incarceration period? No, we really typically don't do it when they're incarcerated um, because they're in a confined setting. Um, if there are, you know, drug and alcohol cravings, they're hard to, you know, meet those craving needs, so to speak, because they're in a yeah. confined setting. Yeah. So it's usually prior to release. Um, if we know that there's a, a date that they're going to be released, they might be set up a couple of months or a month prior to release. Okay. Um, but typically if somebody, we don't give them that medication all throughout their duration of the being in um, the jail setting. It's really preparing for release out in the community. And, and you said the name of this drug is Vivitrol? Vivitrol. Vivitrol. Naltrexone. Okay. Yep. Well, good. I uh, just had some questions about it, and I really appreciate you clearing up the questions that I had. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Anything else for Sarah, as long as we got her up? No? Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, anyone else for any of the department uh, people that are here? Any questions or concerns about reports? Any of the department people care to add anything to their reports or highlight anything? Go ahead. Here from Human Resources. Jenna, thank you. Yeah. I don't have anything to add, but just wanted to highlight that my report is um, accessible via a different link. So I wasn't yeah. sure if all the members were able to find that or not. I saw it. Okay, Wait, perfect. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I had to have help from our own personal CIO to find it myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> I got, uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, yeah. I have one other question. Uh, this is to, uh, uh, goes to Andrew. 
uh, regarding the maps. All right. <laughs> All right. Yes, maps are a thing that exists. They help people find things. Yeah, they help find uh, the ones that that you put up in the in your report. Um, basically, are very well. They're undecipherable. Correct. Yes, <laughs> <I mean>. and <laughs> yes, and so the issue is that right now the Wisconsin State Legislature, which is the official keeper of the maps, has not adopted the new maps. Um, on their website. So there's not an easy to follow, like this is the 92nd, this is the 29th assembly district okay. map. As soon as that is adopted and put up on the Wisconsin legislative map, um, uh, website, I'll include that map so it's easier to understand. So, so the, the, the other question is, when will these maps be effective to the legislative districts? Right now. Oh, so it's not this November. It's well. I mean, it. Everyone who's currently in their legislative districts stays in their legislative districts, but everybody who will be running will most likely be running in a new district. So, for example, our current assembly person, Clint Moses, is representing the 29th assembly district, but he will have to run if he runs again, um, which I'm sure he will. Uh, he'll have to run in the 92nd assembly district, which now goes from Menominee, town of Menominee, city of Menominee, basically all the way across in a straight line to Chippewa Falls. So, okay. yeah, we've kind of we went from uh, three assembly districts in Dunn County to now there's going to be four. We'll have three Senate districts. So it's actually quite a big change. Um, okay. Luckily, the maps that were adopted don't impact like they didn't split any municipalities in Dunn County. So all the municipalities stay whole. So you won't see like half of the city in one assembly district and the other half in a different assembly district. So they did that which is good because that makes ballots a lot easier to follow and hopefully people to understand. What we're going to end up doing is, and I should have put this in the report, but it was all still pretty brand new. Yeah. Um, we will work with the municipal clerks, um, just like what we have to do after a regular redistricting every 10 years. We'll work with the municipal clerks to make sure that they are communicating with the voters like, hey, you used to be in the 29th assembly district and now you're in the 92nd. Um, so that's going to be an educational piece that will make sure that everybody's um, informed about not only the assembly districts, but their new state Senate districts as well. So the website for what is it? My vote dot or uh, gov or whatever it is. Yeah. Will that when will that be updated so that you can go, OK, type in I'm registered in the new one. Yeah. So I think the plan what it sounded like from the Wisconsin Election Commission is that's going to be rolled out so that by the time we get to the filing date, which historically is June 1st, but this year it's June 3rd because June 1st is on a Saturday. Okay. Um, for people to run for office, for state office, um, everything should be updated in my vote so people can see their new districts. It's all just still very new. Um, and so they're still trying to make sure they get that updated. Then do, are we having primaries then this April or? So, uh, nope, the primary was on Tuesday and it was only for the spring election. So all the local nonpartisan okay. offices. Um, the partisan primary for any state assembly, state senate, congressional districts, um, or United States Senate would be August 13th, Tuesday, August 13th. Okay. Yeah. Right. And at that point, everybody would be voting in their new their new districts. So August 13th will be the first opportunity for people to vote in their new whatever their new legislative districts are. Okay, so yeah. nothing is impacting us this April 2nd election, all that stuff. Nope, nope. All right. And so everybody who's still currently serving in their roles in the state legislature will continue to serve throughout the rest of the year. Um, we just, we wouldn't be, so they'll still, Clint will still represent the 29th Assembly District until December, well, January 5th of okay. 2025, when the new state legislature would get sworn in and the new districts would be assigned to those individuals. All right, well, I know. thank you for it's clearing neat. up the questions. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like... It hasn't been stressful for anyone. Um, <laughs> uh, the other thing to note, and it, this didn't make the report, but there is currently a lawsuit with the Wisconsin State um, uh, Supreme Court about the congressional districts. Um, they didn't think that the legislative districts were fair, and they don't think the congressional districts are fair. Um, so we'll see if anything will happen with that. But they're also under a deadline for that as well, because just like for running for state legislature, all of the paperwork to run for Congress has to be turned in and um, certified by June 3rd. And you can start taking out papers. So 
for my office, for state legislature, for state senate, you can start taking out papers on April 15th and it's all due on June 3rd. So that's like window to gather signatures. Um, so they kind of have to have everything figured out before. So is this lawsuit going up against the, the Supreme Court or is this going in to the appellate courts prior to that? So currently the lawsuit is filed with the Wisconsin State Supreme Court. Right State now, Supreme okay. Court, yes. So we'll see if they move on that. Um, again, that's something they're gonna have to figure out quickly if they're gonna move anything, if they're gonna move on it at all. Um, so we'll have to see. But right now we just have new maps for state legislature. So everything is clear as mud, I guess. Yes, yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank and you. as soon as there is, um, as soon as the, the Wisconsin state legislature has their new maps adopted and, and ready for publication, we'll make sure that I work with Rachel Wells as well as the IT department to make sure that that's available on the Dunn County website on, um, under the county clerk section as well as kind of probably a general information section because it will be a lot of new information for people. So, yeah. Cool. Any under other? the umbrella of... Only in government can you do such funny things. Um, <laughs> right now, most articles reference you to go to Dave's redistricting. Yeah. Dave's redistricting, and <laughs> I'm I'm happy to send, I'm happy to send this out. There's so there's two kind of um, there's Dave's redistricting, and there's like our no. It's like Rhino, but it's not. Yeah. Um, so, and the the best one we have right now is Dave's redistricting. So it's it's an interactive map that shows you the new districts and you can kind of click on them, but it doesn't just have them generically labeled. So it, it's all still new. Um, we'll get them adopted as, as, and, and printed out as soon as we can and published. So that's how. Any other questions since I'm up here? Yeah. Uh, Andrew, I, uh, I was looking at the new maps and I was wondering who at the state hates you because a lot of the other counties, they're just in one yeah and assembly i think you have four, four. And yeah Senate, you have three yeah <laughs> so. it's neat um luckily chippewa county is under the same thing they'll have four assembly districts and, and three senate so yeah it will be interesting though because so in addition to the new maps um uh, now the city of menominee was in the 29th assembly district now it'll be in the 92nd um there are two current sitting state senators from opposite parties who will now have to phase off against each other. So Jeff Smith is the uh, state senator for the southern part of Dunn County, and his new district actually now is in the same district as current sitting senator Jesse James. So that's going to be an interesting contest and see how that works out. And it's a whole new world. So we'll <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, uh, it is good that they did finally adopt a set of maps that was been in limbo for quite some time and it's been really stressful for any candidate who's interested in running for state legislature, not knowing where they might live. Um, there's several assembly people that will now run against their current neighbor, assembly, what was their neighboring assembly district and now they're running against each other. So it'll be a whole new ball game. Never dull. Vaughn, did you have a question too? No. Oh, okay. Just to make sure we, we got... I knew there was a couple of them pending here. Bob, did you have one? I'm sorry, I thought you would. Your hand? Okay. All right. So any other questions since I'm up here? Okay. Just good luck. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any uh, anything else? Any staff? Well, thank you all for being here anyway. Um, next, then, uh, consideration uh, actions to be taken by the Committee on Administration would be approval of the 11824 to 21324 vouchers. Um, I'm going to hit a couple, and maybe you've got a couple, and they're not serious, but there was uh, one there for $2,000 repair on a Menominee vehicle. I mean, maybe we bumped one, or I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah. I think it was twelve fifty. Twelve fifty is the first item. Twelve fifty. Yeah. Twelve fifty. Yeah. I didn't know they had a shop in Menominee. I didn't either. That was my question. <laughs> all right. Okay, that's all I had. Uh, Jim, you have something else? Yeah, I've got some um, on uh, 110, uh, risk management. Uh, this is under a GS Corporation for $5,500. Employee bonds.
I can't provide a lot of in-depth detail. Our um, safety and benefits coordinator um, manages that process, but I do know each year there are a very few select um, positions in the county that we purchase bond bonds for, and that is just an annual cost um, each year um, at fifty five hundred. So um, I, I know it covers our medical examiner um, to be and, bonded. Yes, and I can um, provide more in-depth information at the next just, meeting. Yeah, I would, I would yeah. be interested to find out, one, who's bonded and why. My understanding. I've got, I've got mm -hmm. I'm assuming these two guys, three guys. All right. And for us, it's for the charges of access is monthly just because we handle all the money. So if one of us were to steal, then we just be bonded with the check. You can't just be looking at anybody and everybody, right? That kind of thing. Well, I can't take somebody's money. So if I took somebody's money, like okay, all right. Um, then I'm bonded because they looked and um, did a background check on me. Okay. Those types of things, and then the insurance will cover that lost money. Mm -hmm. Besides yourself and your department, is there anybody else who would be bonded also? Um, it's actually the elected officers that get bonded. <laughs> All right, everybody's sure. in on this, okay. I had a, for the deputies in our office, we um, had that background. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, it would, I'd be just interested to find out who is bonded in the county. And sure. What, what, you know, what, what's their, why are they doing it? That's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In summary, I think it's just relating to the liability okay. of insurance and coverage of the county. So I can provide more details at the next meeting. That would be fine. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Anything else? Uh, Tim, you have another one? Motor vehicle repair. Uh, and then I see here under 270, under patrol, wide area network for one entry for 2480 and another entry for $720. For the state of Wisconsin Department of Justice. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is, and you should see two more entries. You, emergency management would have one in addition to the Sheriff's Department and the Child Support Agency. Um, so, uh, that payment is for, they call it a badger net circuit. It is a separate network connection that goes to the state of Wisconsin and some of the secure communications that happen are only required or only allowed to go over that. So our normal internet connection isn't good enough for the sheriff's department to talk to the department of justice. Um, information at the city and then the child support agency and uh, that's where emergency management happens as well. So, okay, we, so essentially this is just like a super secure server connection something? Uh, kind of? That's the concept, yes. Yeah, I would argue it's no more secure than than what we have is just a requirement. The state won't let us contact their information unless it goes over that line. Okay. So okay. you gotta do it. Reports and stuff go over this line? Yeah, so like if uh, somebody were to do a criminal background check um, from like the Sheriff's Department or Emergency Management where that happens, it goes over that line. Okay, so would you like for a new hire, that type of thing, or? Um, it, new hire in the Sheriff's Department would, okay. would happen over that. Uh, I assume HR uses a separate agency for background checks. I, um, the sheriff's department doesn't do the background checks, right, Jenna? Okay. And then besides the sheriff's department, who else might use this? Is that uh, child support and emergency management? Okay. So you should see one charge for child support, and then you'll see pretty much the same two charges for emergency management and sheriff. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not 100% sure about that one, but sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nope. Okay. 
And then um, if I may, Mr. Chair. Sure. Yeah. Under 1430 external organization uh, for approximately $23,400. West Central. Oh, you're back on. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm waiting for the what West Central Wisconsin Regional. That's all it's got. Wisconsin, West Central Wisconsin. It's regional planning. It's our um, annual contribution that we we support. Um, let's see, we support Dunn County Housing um, and the Dunn County Economic Development Corporation and what regional planning and then the libraries. Okay, so that's all under that. That's just the regional planning piece. Okay. And then when it says external organization, those are the external organizations. Yes. yes. Okay. Those are those comprise the external organizations. Okay. And that okay. just happens to be one of them. Yeah, I just hadn't seen this before. And I kind of thought, okay, I'll just pass the question on. And then um, really, this is uh, last question it isn't necessarily on a voucher question, but it has something to do with um, your stuff. Uh, regarding the employees and the health insurance, that kind of thing, is the you don't have to get up, but but this is in regards to um, these hospital changes and stuff that's going on down the pike. Is this uh, changing health care availability for our employees? No. Okay. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Our network option within our health plan is very open, meaning there's a lot of provider options mm -hmm. included within that network. Sacred Heart, HSHS, Prevea, you know, were in the network, so that may affect some folks that have chosen to go to those providers. However, um, the provider network includes most of the remaining providers in the area. So um, I, it may displace care for, for some of the members, but not all. Okay. Really, I, you know, it's one of our biggest mm -hmm. dollars and cent items that, that we have here. And I was just wondering, uh, are we having any of our employees kind of stuck in something that's going away? Or are we going to have an option for them to maybe redo their plan so that they can, you know, move on or are they locked in on this other stuff? We don't have any sort of plan design that locks them into one certain provider. Okay. So um, that is not an issue currently. All right. So they can meander anywhere. <laughs> yes. Dr. XYZ goes over here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In fact, our care navigation service, Aletheus, if you can recall, um, that's a service that they can call to help them shop for a provider. Um, so luckily we do have that. So if they are losing their provider through HSHS or otherwise, um, they do have a resource to call and, and help in, in finding and so they have a plan to new providers. Them. Yes. Yes. And they have the flexibility to do that within the current plan design. Okay. Thank uh, you very much. I got a question for you and I don't know if you have the answer, but. Um, can they, would Elysius help them in terms of, again, you know, I'm taking my, you know, son for special treatments to Prevea to, for that information, back on information and test information. Can they retrieve that now from Prevea or HSHS so that it could go to the other provider or is that locked up? I think they can help assist the employee and in connecting them with the new provider and, and maybe helping and making sure that the proper release of authorizations are in place. But I don't think that Aletheus is receiving um, any sort of medical record, okay. um, you know, other than, of course, the service that they're seeking um, with a different provider. So uh, they are meant to help assist in the transition. And um, that's the extent I know of that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chris. 
I have an answer to the $2,000 question. Okay. <laughs> uh, we paid $2,000 to the city of Menominee for storage of our mobile command vehicle. Oh. It's a big vehicle. Big vehicle. Oh, it's that big. It's that big. Big, uh, it's like SWAT type. Oh, oh, oh. Super it's SWAT. Thing. Yeah. The MRAP or whatever. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I don't know where they store it, but wherever they do, costs us two thousand dollars. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, Tim. That's Anything else? All, questions I all right. Well, thank you much, uh, Mr. Baller. We'll see. Anything? All right. Okay. Motion to uh, approve the vouchers then and move on. Mr. Wilson moves. Mr. Tim uh, seconds. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, moving forward on the agenda, uh, address the issue of a county treasurer vacancy plan. Uh, and I think Chris has got some information for us. I think Janet's going to lead this conversation for you. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so just to provide a little bit of background information and then some information that you already may know, um, the previous treasurer did leave that position effective February 16th. So her first day, <laughs> her first day in her new role as assistant finance director was uh, February 19th. Um, so since then and per um, what is allowed under state statute. Um, Angela Wagner is the current deputy treasurer, uh, the, the current full-time deputy treasurer within that office and has accepted the interim role for treasurer. And she is here today. And with your permission would um, ask that she join the discussion. Um, so our hope today is to get um, an idea from the committee of of your preferences for filling that role um, with the upcoming election. So um, just to recap, we are in an election year um, for filling the 2025 to 2028 term for that office. And um, nomination papers can be submitted starting April 15th through June 3rd. Um, and then the election will take place in November and the successful um, candidate would start the first Monday in January. So that pre presents some challenges or some um, opportunity for discussion with this committee on how we want to choose to move forward with that, knowing that there's an upcoming election. Um, so we do have a few options um, one of them being you know we could post the position uh, for a normal recruitment process however however that you know if there was a successful candidate chosen by way of recruitment and appointed by the board then in november they could could get elected or not get elected so there's kind of a little bit of a time frame of um I guess awkwardness and and just wanted to kind of get the thoughts from the committee on how how you feel it might be best to move forward with filling that role. Um, and I again I do have Angela here too, and she might offer some context and ideas to that if do if you would join us. Maybe sit by Jenna there if you would please. So I got it. Uh, yeah. Please, Mr. Bauer. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, so what's are the taxes mostly collected already? So is there going to be a lot of work involved in this or is it kind of? I'm super kind of glad that Angela is here to answer <laughs> those questions. So, so, I mean, I'm just saying it'd be a lot of work if the taxes weren't all in yet. I mean, I can see that happening, but. Sure. So one thing um, kind of is I, um, we have our 40 hours a week that we already have our financial responsibilities for the county for collecting all the monies. Um, so we have that. So tax time is actually extra, um, extra time. So that's when we get some of our temp helpers and that type of stuff. So once I am done with tax collection, 
then um, I go back to catching up on my financials for the county. And we also, so just to give you an example right now, we settled, oh, but they have, let me start over. Miss Pallies have, they have to collect until February 7th, including the grace period. Then they have to go through and reconcile all their batches to the information they've sent to us. And then if we have any differences that needs to be fixed, which sometimes can take our software company to look into. Um, after that point, then um, we use our software to generate what we would call the settlement. And payments need to be made out to municipalities. And um, from the municipalities, they send it to the school districts or, and then they send us back our money and this type of thing. So, um, that deadline was Tuesday. I think we're there. I think we got all 30 done. Um, there's a couple of last minute ones that were questionable. But so now after that part, now what we have done is we sent out all the delinquent notices for people who we didn't receive payments for to give them a heads up of what the requirements are. So right now we're fielding a lot of those phone calls. Um, but then we are also, you know, every day I get deposits from other departments to process. And, um, you know, today, for example, um, a lot of people when they're doing their taxes call us for receipts. So that's kind of a lot of our counter work right now, too. And then um, I did receive some emails today on bonds, what are available and kind of every day I have to import from the bank and balance that out with the departments. We send that out to have them import all their entries into the system. And um, like all the accounts payable checks were paid today. So then I have to go through that. I have to upload that back to the bank and process all those and if anybody has attachments. So it's always kind of a moving table. Um, it does slow down as far as counter work, kind of starting about March 15th or so until um, June. Like June, I'll pick up with a lot of people coming back in to pay their second installments. And that will go through July and then I have to balance out. And then at that time, Dunn County kept all the money and um, we have to send that back out to the schools and everybody. So that money has to be in their hands by the 20th is typically the guideline. And then we turn around and do sale book on September 1st to say, hey, two years from the state, you didn't pay your taxes. We have the opportunity to take your property if you do not pay on them. So all those notices go out along with delinquent notices. So we field a lot of phone calls and then um, doing our normal work for a couple months. That's why I'd like October for collection time. And then um, we train some with municipal clerks at the end of October. And then in November, we start to receive numbers from the municipalities and from the states um, to be entered into the system to prepare the tax bills from the different reports. And that takes us up until the third Monday of December, at which point everything is going in the mail. And then we arrive at February 20th. And we don't know how we got there. <laughs> so that is kind of, so that's the tax portion, but there's still the balancing of the bank account, um, checking in with other departments of the, and um, the accounts payable portion also. Now, you're full-time, correct? Yep. Okay. And are is there anyone who is on your part-time group that would be willing or ones to help you in an interim basis as far as staff? Sure. So we have um, three part-timers. Um, one is technically our temp that comes just in... December, that time frame. Yeah. Um, but she has gracefully said she will come and step up and be there when I have to go to meetings and stuff. Okay. Um, the problem is, is all my staff is retired. Um, so they are limited on how many hours and how much income they can make. So unfortunately, I don't have the option to increase their hours. Um, they did find me another part-timer. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, but again, limited of what we can do. So Jenna and I had a conversation today to kind of look at how we can fill some of that. And some of the problem is, 
is, you know, these um, treasures, they don't have sometimes as much experience. They're really good at the tax collection portion, but they don't have the experience of day-to-day -day county finances. So I need to get some training to them to help have them help me pick that up. Jim has a question, or is his hand up online? Well, Jim. Um, I, yeah, the question I have, um, how do you, uh, well, I guess I, I got a delinquent tax notice in the mail. I went, what? <laughs> uh, so I checked with um, the, my, uh, the town, because um, I handed it to the, the town clerk uh, myself, and I checked, and the, the check's been cashed by the town of Tainter. So why would I have gotten a delinquent tax notice? And I guess how often has that happened to other people in Dunn County? Okay, so I'm a pretty much straight shooter. So <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be disappointing this year. Yeah, um, we had a few of those this year. Um, I don't know for sure your check. Um, if you, the biggest thing people forget is that January 31st of 2024 was the postmark you wanted on your envelope. And then if you paid after that time, you want it in the office by February 7th. If you don't have it in, that's that grace period, which was originally for social security um, taxpayers. So they used to get their checks at the beginning of the month. Um, then after that point, you, if you pay after that point, you're delinquent and um, the full amount becomes due with penalty and interest. So I don't know what the postmark, I understand you handed it to her, but do you know the date you handed it to her? Yes, it was, uh, uh, I think it was January 29th or January 30th and she took it and gave me a receipt. So I, really wasn't capable of postmarking it because I did hand it to her. So. And you uh, had your receipt though? Oh yeah. Yeah. She gave me a receipt. Okay. Um, yeah. And we, those are the phone calls that we field. And um, then what I would do is I would look into that and I would have to follow up with Doris. Um, if it's Tainter, I think you said Tainter. Um, yeah. Just to see if, she remembers something. Um, do you have more than one parcel? Those types of questions are usually sometimes what happens too. Because I, and I, and I don't mean to be bringing up my my stuff during this meeting. It's just that it made me go, okay, how often? How is this happening to uh, you know quite a few other residents? And is it because of what you were just talking about? You know, kind of you're having to step up and you've got a sh shortfall of help with people not being able to, you know, work full time. So is that kind of, is this an example of what, what's happening then? No. Um, so basically what I've seen this year is it's actually credit card payments. A lot more people want to pay their taxes with credit card. And so all that monies at this time comes to Dunn County but I am unable to, at our office, um, to collect for municipalities we do not have contracts with. They, um, by state statute, they should be collecting the first installment. And sometimes due to staffing issues, they contract with us and pay us a fee for us to um, cover our labor costs. So if these payments come in, example, Tainter, then we have to turn around and enter that into our system that we received it, so it will match up to our bank statement, ACH, and then I have to create an invoice to send that money to the town of Tainter, and then that has to be approved and paid by accounts payable. She receives it in her bank or a check the next day, and then she applies the payment to the tax bill. So there was a few this year who, um, not Tainter, uh, a few who didn't, maybe understand that process all the way because we have some new treasures. So um, I have, I do know I have seven taxpayers right now that that happened with. And I, you know, I field all kinds of questions today. I had another one. We just always 
sometimes can't catch it on the first ring when there's only one of us. The other day, I was on the phone with the tax program for two hours and I was the only one there. So it, I had 15 missed phone calls. So that's kind of where you're gonna see some of that delay. Does that answer your question? Um, sort of, partially. I think, I think, but, I think Jim, but, I think that Angela is selling herself short a little bit in the sense that I think those are exactly the kinds of things that suck up your time. Mm -hmm. They might have a perfectly explainable explanation. They may be perfectly fixable, but they tell, still take time to research what happened and then apply the correction. Like when the county manager doesn't pay her taxes on time because she sends them from Florida <laughs> and they don't get postmarked. <laughs> there we go. Note to self, make sure they stamp it. <laughs> well, but and, in, like I but said, I didn't I don't mean to bring it up in you know in, in the meeting, especially just dealing with my own stuff, but I just was wondering how it kind of applied to what you're talking about. So well, and I would just say that in you know, so that did happen to me. I mailed mine on the 31st from Florida. They were um barcoded, but not it was not um postmarked. And so then in great service from the treasurer's office, Sophia took it to the post office, or maybe Angela did, I don't know, we took it to the post office to see if they could scan it and figure out when it was sent. And they couldn't. They could figure out where it was sent from, but not when it was sent. Um, and so, but I mean, like all of that took a lot of time. Um, oh, so Jenna. I was just going to say, um, would it be fair to summarize that even um, even though there are deadlines with certain uh, pieces of the process, it doesn't always mean that the work stops after the deadline. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, and so I, I guess, uh, do you have a suggestion as we move, we can consider to move forward and how to resolve, uh, make sure we have enough help in the office? So my suggestion was to get some backfill or maybe have someone, um, you know, I have procedures that maybe I, someone can help me train, give me some hours for training. Um, and I can go through that process. I do know the process um, until they can find someone. You're, I think it would be a good option to, you know, check internally to see if anybody wants to apply and see what we get. Um, I think you could also wait to see who takes out papers and let the election select it. Um, you do have a little bit more control if you hire someone yourself. Um, but some of the issue with that is, you know, you're kind of giving them, you know, per perhaps a 10 month commitment. And after that, they could be looking for a new job, depending on if they want or not. So you, that's almost where I feel like someone, you would be on the ballot as an incumbent because you were already appointed. So that would be helpful because sometimes they're not ran against in that case. Um, that, you know, that helps too, as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we just did an intern, let's say for until the election time, let's oh. say, we offer it to you as an intern, then mm -hmm. you go back to your other position when 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 that's over, so you don't lose your job as well. But yep. Uh, yep. is that optional? I mean, is that some? Yeah, so one of the things we could consider is just making sure that um, there's enough support in the office and Angela remains interim until the election is complete and we know who that candidate is. Or another option would be, as Angela mentioned, to um, post a recruitment either now or, you know, in the time frame of nomination papers and see if there's a viable candidate that the board would like to appoint prior to the election. However, again, the, the question mark with that is um, them getting reelected. And of course we would hope for the best, but um, that, that creates a little bit of a challenge. So, um, wanted to have an open discussion with the committee on on kind of what you think uh, you would prefer and um, we're open to either route it sounds <laughs> as long as we can get some 
adequate support staff in the office for that time frame. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, that's right now, that's my biggest concern that it, almost immediately we have to make some sort of proper move to make sure that uh, we don't uh, stress out our current people and end up with nobody in that office. I don't want to see that, <laughs> you know, there's only so much people can, can do. Um, so I guess uh, glad to hear that, you know, she would stay. Um, beyond that, uh, you know, it's, it, it is our duty, so to speak, as, as a committee to uh, move forward and try to keep that office staff. Um, we don't know, I guess at this point, who may, you know, throw their hat in the ring and say, you know, yeah, I'd be interested and it's worth worth it to, you know, serve in that position with, like you were saying, with the idea that if you're the, you know, got some background and doing okay, it may help you, you know, going forward in an election, but we may not get anybody, but I guess we'd have to face that too. Mr. Bosey. Uh, I wasn't on the, the board when this happened before, but I believe you had to replace the county clerk. Clerk, treasurer. And it's... Yeah, it seemed like I was interviewing here all the time. <laughs> Just from the county clerk's side, Andrew seemed to work out very well. And were you appointed? Do you want to explain how that process worked or how you went through that? Right. Uh, what can, we can too. Oh. Go ahead. I was a I was in that same situation when Doris left, but um, the election had just finished in December, and so Doris left in. February. So they were appointed, I think in May. And then um, it was open. We had to hold it open for a while to get three candidates for our office. And then they did interviews and they hired. And then in May they started, but they've never had to run again because the election is this year. So it stayed the whole three years. Yeah, they, they just had a, yeah. a, a decent term, so to speak. Andrew had, to, you know, almost. So like Andrew, yeah. did did you apply or did they find you know, okay? Yeah. So he applied. There was a full recruitment process that took place. This was in 2021, and luckily that was the very beginning of that term. So we could we were able to guarantee at least you know yeah. less than four years, as compared to. 10 or nine months, um, which is the situation that we're in now. And, and we had a good pool of candidates. We really did, I thought, for the, for the positions. Um, from that point, we, you know, HR did background checks and all the, the appropriate, you know, things. And then um, we did a, uh, a original uh, interviews and left time scheduled so that if we wanted to do a second interview with anyone, uh, we had those arrangements made. Uh, and in both the treasurer and in the uh, clerk, uh, we're, like I say, fortunate to have, you know, qualified people uh, apply. And it was, uh, you know, it, it was a couple tough decisions. I think we had some mm -hmm. good, but I think because, like you were saying, they were going to be there for, you know, three and a half years or, you know, at least uh, and get a taste for whether they even wanted to continue and then you know, also to become, if that was working out for him, become good, uh, knowledgeable staff. But um, it was a process. Uh, you know, it. I think we interviewed what six, five or six candidates for each. I'm recalling three, but there might have been well, uh, well one. But then, because yeah. course, we also did. <laughs> CFO too, and yeah, yeah. So there was a right. lot of movement that year. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, county yeah. manager, and yeah. So sure. yeah, um, so I mean, just like you said, something. If I may, sorry, no, um, something to keep in mind is a recruitment process will likely take at least two months. You know, if we do a posting, and then review the applications, um, and then assemble the committee for interviews, um, that does take. Quite a bit of time so realistically we're into summer before a candidate is selected so yeah. it's and, and challenging that, and that complicates it that's mm -hmm. my my th thought is that in other words this person could would have to file papers ahead of time and then 
if they decided they wanted to actually come, you know, and be part of that hiring process, they could. Had they not fired, filed papers coming up here, they will not be on the ballot. It would have to be a write-in. Um, so, you know, I, that's the complication I see is that, that, you know, unless they decided ahead of time that they're going to run, they're not going to be on the ballot even if they took the position for, you know, six months. Potential could be to post the position as soon as possible, like with a recruitment process, and then um, with the intention that that applicant pool will submit papers. I mean, I think it would be an interesting um, election because there'd probably be a lot more names on the ballot, but yeah. um, that's that, an approach that, that could be considered. That would, that would, I guess, if we're going to do it, that would be my thought. What do you, what do you guys think? Or, you know. I mean, Mr. Zahns, what do you think, yeah. too? I mean, you could go back and, and fill in the backfill with part-time people, and then when, when it's all said and done, they could just be released again. I mean, that would save everybody a lot of work. Um, but the training, if they need training a little bit, there might be some there. Your retired people would be your best choice to go after again. If they reach their full retirement age, then there's no limit on what they can earn. So you could probably get somebody that could work the whole summer without, you know, yeah. It's just another thought, but I mean, if you wanted to fill in that position, we'd fill in behind you or something. That's yeah. something like that, you know? Yeah. And uh, sorry, I don't know Please. how all the procedures work, but um, another option is one summer we did have an intern. Um, so that helped too, because then, you know, you don't have that employment commitment. Um, you could do a temp person versus hiring a part time person. So then, you know, they know what they're getting into. Um, those are a couple options there. It's just, I think, you know, the biggest thing is, I think the biggest thing for treasurers is their personality is not really election material. <laughs> you know, I mean. Yeah. And so I think that might scare a few candidates away if you appoint and try to, but it's worth probably checking out especially anybody internal, because then at least it feels not as crazy to them. You know, like they understand how the county works and how many openings do you have right now? 22? <laughs> oh, is this a quiz? I know it's in my report, but <laughs> I think it's 21. 21. 21. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those are just a couple different things. Um, Right. I think if I could kind of reduce it down to two options for the committee to consider, it would be, um, you know, one, waiting until to see how the ele elections shakes out. Angela's the interim for the remainder of the year. And then we obviously have the discussion about support. Um, and then the second option being we get the role posted through our normal recruitment process and um, hope for the best. Um, <laughs> there, the potential downsides, I see uh, that our county clerk grimacing. <laughs> um, potential downside to that would be, you know, creating more competition for, and then, you know, if we did select a candidate and then that wasn't the one that got elected, that, that could be challenging, so. I just wanna add two things for mostly for supervisors on. Um, the, I looked at this uh, about a year ago, and the last time that the county treasurer was challenged in an election, I believe, was 1992. So um, it's not a highly sought after office. But having said that, there's always been a person that has been the county treasurer or has been appointed to then run for the county treasurer position. So that's just the perspective I'm going to offer. I, if it remained open, as the person who shares an office suite with the treasurer's office, um, if it remains open, there could potentially be a huge, like a number of people applying or, or uh, taking out papers to run for this position versus somebody who's applied. We have some training time with them. That's just what I'll offer for a historic perspective on the particular office and its election. Andrew, is there anybody who has submitted uh, any interest or paperwork at this stage? No, the first day you can take out and circulate nomination papers is April 15th, um, but we haven't, Nobody's I think it's still also new. about it or anything like that? No. Mm -mm. 
I have gone back to previous treasures and reached out to some financial people that I know, I know Sophia did too, and they were not interested. I would say too, because of the deadline of June 3rd. So if we do a recruitment, we have to have a candidate selected by June 3rd, because otherwise, if, are we communicating to all of the applicants that they should take papers out? And then we have... It's Maybe messy. a bigger issue. Yeah, the um, with our county population being just over 45,000, the requirement is to get a minimum of 200 signatures to run for the office. So if somebody was hired May 30th, it doesn't give a lot of time to do that. So, I mean, yes, there is a barrier with that as well. And how, how do you go about the recruitment of a candidate when you say, hey, by the way, you're going to have to run for this? potentially even before you get seated as the treasurer, should you be chosen. The the other flip side would be you're advertising it, right? There's more information about it. If anybody's listening out there, I suggest that you run for treasurer and not county clerk, but. Um, uh, Only if you're trainable and no finance. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Sorry. there's a caveat. Um, but yeah, I mean, that does make it a little more complicated with how to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I mean, Angela made a good point at the county board meeting last night, right? The requirements to run for these offices are 18, live in the county, not a felon, preferably. Um, uh, so, I mean, that does, that is kind of scary. So if we, if the county were to recruit for someone, it advertises the position more, letting people know that this position is open and it is an office to be sought and elected. I don't know. Up to you guys. Just my opinion, I'd like to see it recruited and that way we get to kind of choose who we want and more than likely that person's going to get elected, so. Do we need to make a decision on this now due to the short timeline? I think so. Okay. If we're going to pursue that avenue, I think we need to decide that really quick. I mean, I did, I did agenda it for action. I don't know that it needs a formal um, motion, but because it's agended for action, it certainly can. You got to make a motion mm -hmm. and decide to go ahead with that. Okay, so. Go ahead. Just so that I'm clear, what we're looking at in regards to a motion is to find somebody interim wise, which you're taking that position at this particular time, yeah. and you will take that until the end of the year, so to speak, or whenever. Yeah, whenever you guys. Hire okay. Someone. All right. So we've got that covered. <laughs> and, and from your experience, we're looking for a, some part-time comp, um, capable part-time help in that office. One, maybe two people. Potentially, because I'm also on a, I'm a pit lead for the new software. And we um, are trying to get the new software for the tax program. And I don't know, we haven't picked a date or haven't, we have another meeting coming up, right, Dan? And it either needs to go now before summer so that we can practice with it before we roll it out to everyone, or I think we're going to have to put it on hold until next year. But um, we have funding set aside for it this year. And it has real benefits to it. Um, just a point of question, what if nobody applies for the position? Therein is our answer. There, well, um, we would <laughs> hope that somebody runs. They might not apply, but there might be yeah. a candidate. Yeah. Um, and then they would get elected and then begin their term in January of 2025. That would leave Angela in the interim role uh, for the remainder of the year. And then we would address backfill concerns. So in that scenario, mm -hmm. <laughs> if nobody applies or if nobody takes out papers to run, um, there's the option that a person could run as a registered write-in. They would have until the Friday before the election at noon to file the proper paperwork to do a registered write-in campaign. Um, so that would be uh, November 5th, so whatever, November 1st. Math is hard. Um, I count votes, not money. And so... Uh, that would be the option, right? So we still have a, an option for a write-in. If at that point, 
even we didn't have a write-in candidate, then the county board could appoint um, a treasurer in the new year in 2025, kind of like we'd have to recruit and imagine and do a, a search again. So there's that scenario as well. But I, I, I like the possibility <laughs> that if we recruit and let it know right as soon as we can, as you were saying that somebody who would be serious about it and qualified for it gives us a chance to take a look at that. And, and um, I just, you know, selfishly <laughs> uh, looking for the best for the county and, and for the office and, and for our current staff, I, I, I like that possibility. So um, I, I don't would... think you have to take action to we could we have Angela's Angela actually the deputy steps yep. in in a vacancy by statute. Um, so mm -hmm. we haven't we but we also have that covered. I think we can work with her on figuring out what the backfill looks like, whether that's a one yep. full time temporary yep. person or some two part time people or whatever that looks like. We can do that part of it. I, I would suggest if you're looking at a recruitment, then you're motion would be to direct the HR department to rec to um, conduct a recruitment for yeah, filling. I, I think the that that is as needed in register of or the, the, register of deeds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to the, 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 the motion doesn't have to include a part time person or anything. Like no, that. Okay. no. Well, and, and as needed, whatever you guys need, you, you know, go ahead and do it. I mean, I, I think you'll do that anyway, and and uh, trust that you're gonna get the job done. Now, Angela, but, are you looking at having more hours as well to, to have, help train and take care of this, or are you just you're you gonna have to go over to 40 hours and get some of this work done? Is that what absolutely. you're saying too? Yeah, yeah okay. I do have. That would have to be included somehow in that she gets the we, time yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah, we would have to do a um, uh, out of class. Do, is that work? Yes. Can we so use that for that purpose. We we did um, so. Angela will be compensated at the same rate as the current compensation for the treasurer role. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. we can do. I was hoping we could do that. I don't think there was any mm -hmm. statute standing in the way for that. Okay. All right. Um, you want to make that motion then that we go ahead and recruit? I'd make that motion. Mr. Wilson moves. I'll second. Second by Mr. Leonel. Um, any comment? Uh, comments or questions, uh, anything? If I can add, um, I could get the recruitment out ASAP and then uh, potentially and hopefully have an applicant pool for review by this committee at the March meeting. Wow, that okay. would be fast. Yes. I think if you it, could do let's, it. Let's, we're going to hope for the best. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. The possible, I mean, if we had to do it earlier and make a special meeting to get this taken care of and all stuff, if why wait till a regular end of the month like this? You know, it's, mm -hmm. it'd be late. Sure. I think, I think we'll be okay if we can review applicants by March and then the month of April, we can um, select for interviews and get interviews scheduled. And then that leaves May for, um, a, a candidate to be selected and 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 also run for office. Um, I, I we wouldn't want to get much oh. later than that. So oh, that's, yeah. yep. I think that's cool. Is that all right? We shoot for that. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you for your time. I know Good you're very welcome. busy. <laughs> Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Thanks for the discussion and brainstorming. Yeah. That was very good. <laughs> Business gal, we stole most of her time. Sorry. And you thought you were just going to hang out for this spring, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Uh, consideration reports, resolutions, and ordinances to the county board from this committee on administration. We have one, and it was a lengthy bunch of information, but it comes around every year. Uh, and that is a resolution uh, from this department to pass on the 2023 carry forwards. Uh, any questions from any of you? I think everyone understand what the carry forwards are. All right. 
And in this yes, particular please. circumstance, you are just approving the ones for the Department of Administration. Yeah. So HR, IT, um, county manager. I don't. I, I don't yeah, know that, one from that, them, but whoever there the are. Those that yeah. we had in the explanations were. I think you package. have the entire list for the entire county, oh, was, and you well, only you only need okay. to approve the All Department right. of Administration. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I I cheated. I did not look. <laughs> I mean, I looked down, but, but I looked I looked at the explanation at the end. All right. Uh, okay. That's helpful. <laughs> uh, any uh, one care to uh, make a motion, or do you want some discussion on it? All right. Second. Seconded. So, yep. motion by Mr. Bauer, second by Mr. Leonel. Uh, any other question or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Passes. Thank you. Uh, next meeting date. Be our regular meeting time of March 28, 2024. Uh, I just have one question about that. If it works out better for people involved, if we do have the possibility of looking at a candidate list, um, would you care to meet earlier or do you think it is all right if we go from three o'clock and go a little later? Um, yeah, you're back the back side of when um you're always on the same day as health and human services and they're at six o'clock. So, so you have some time. So we'd have I think we'd have plenty of time. I don't think. All right. Sound good. You're flexible, okay. But I think yeah, you know, as long as we have three hours. I know we don't want to crowd that meeting. Yeah, so our regular meeting date would be the twenty eighth, and I guess uh and if so, that packet of information well, comes out to you. Uh, and if Jenna sends us a list of candidates to review, uh, just remind all the people in this committee that that is confidential. Um, please don't disclose uh, information about them. You know, there may be some background information and so on. And uh, all are through the process. Just remind you that, and at the end, if we have anything in writing, please turn it in to be you know, if you don't have a way to dispose of it properly at home. So we do not pass anybody's personal records on or that they get picked up, you know, inadvertently somewhere left on a table or something. So that part, uh, please be careful with beyond that. Uh, any other announcements? All right, we're adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen and staff.